Hello and welcome. You're tuned to the Leg Up, your weekly thoroughbred preview show, and I'm joined in studio by usual suspects, Paul Mawadi and Stephen Hunt. Good morning, Paul. Back from Cambridge. Big night at Cambridge Raceway on Friday night. Did you uh, enjoy yourself? It was a huge night, yeah, mm. and they put on a great, great show there, the uh, club. Branchy. Um, Indeed, yeah, 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 yeah. Got yeah. to say hi to Branchy, yep. um, great man. Very nice guy. Um, yeah. The crowd were right into it as well. Um, yeah, they did. They looked it. It was a, it was a big crowd there. Of course, the uh, TAB trot, and um, of course Merlin getting up in the uh, race, the million dollar race by Grins, mm -hmm. which I'm sure Steve was watching. It was the last race on the card, Steve. <laughs> Unfortunately, I just missed it, Paul. <laughs> you did watch a bit of harness on Friday night. No, I did. Honestly, I did. Yeah, I, yeah, I watched yeah. a couple of the features there yeah. and. I was glued to the TV for 30 minutes, which is surprising when it comes to the standard brief. Yeah, it doesn't happen too often. Uh, well, let's talk about the thoroughbreds and start from last week. Obviously, we had a big day at Rickerton and obviously Hawks Bay Cup Day uh, run at Otaki as well. Yeah, testify me, just in a purple patch of form, uh, replicated uh, his win, obviously from the St Ledger to the to Otaki winning the Hawks Bay Cup. So not not sure what is planned going forward for testify me, but uh, regardless, he, he looks to be a promising stayer next season. Uh, but depending on what he does in the near future remains to be seen. Uh, Rickerton, I'm really loving these Rickerton yeah, meetings, good, Thaddeus. Uh, we've got three or four in the space of like five or six weeks. Obviously, Rickerton uh, tomorrow on the backup from seven days ago. Uh, Epi Beal was impressive, winning the Phillies race over 1,600 metres. A lot of those horses will be backing up over 2,000 metres, which we'll touch on later in the show. And Matt Scott got the job done, the inaugural yes. Southern Alps. Uh, a fantastic win. Again, we'll touch on that horse and its chances when it steps up to wait for age over 2,000 metres tomorrow. But, yeah, I'm really liking these Rickerton cards. You've got a similar pool of horses, obviously the same track, similar track conditions, so it makes the form a touch easier for punters. Yeah, yeah, no, a good meeting tomorrow, and we'll touch on that in more depth shortly. No BP, Paul? Where's he? Uh, no, he's under the weather. Well, no, how would you say? He's had some teeth out. Yeah. <laughs> That's how you'd say it, yeah. if you had some teeth out. Yeah, yeah. and he's, he's, he's not keen on talking. He's resting up. Yeah, yeah, and he rightly so. Yeah. He deserves he'll a He'll be watching. Yeah. Oh, he'll be definitely watching, yeah, among the uh, thousands that are tuning in <laughs> as we speak. We've yeah. just dropped, well, they've dropped off now, hey? <laughs> no, now yeah. we've let them know there's yeah, no BP. Exactly, yes. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Okay. Well, hopefully they'll stick around. Uh, get well, BP. OK, let's get to our first segment on the show, and the producers have been busy last week. We've got How Bizarre back. Let's check it out. OK, you've got her in the top two. Who's the top one for you in a Hawks Bay Cup, Steve? And Paul coming, be coming behind him. Yeah, I'll go with Testify Me. Uh, look, on a massive day at... Uh, uh, yes, I'm not far away from the first it came... Oh. And we've got a young fella who thinks he's at a Knicks game up at Wellington because he's taken the shirt off. <laughs> That's fantastic. You don't get to see that very often on a racetrack. 17 starts, starts to, to, take, do that. to do that. Good on you, young fella. You're looking sharp. Friday nights. You're really looking forward to the, mate, the meeting. Oh, mate, now it's just now it's just put me right off. I'm going to race three, and I like the look of the Roger James Robert Wellwood trained northeasterly. Northeasterly? What happened to Sinbin? Oh, sorry, Sinbin. <laughs> Sinbin? Sorry, it's Sinbin. We have to spend long on it because you've explained it. Yeah. Uh, Sinbin. Sinbin for you. Well, tell us about it quickly, do you know? Robbie Patterson, Trent. Oh, man. Yeah, that, Enough that, said. That's all you need to know. Oh, okay. Go to Winton. Go to Winton. I'll come back to it. Unbelievable. I'll just ask him uh, once we finish up the show yeah. where he got those Warriors pyjamas from. <laughs> They're a rippers, aren't they? Oh, we had a bit in the we had a bit in the locker there. We had a bit to get through. Fair to come. Ten minutes in here. Yeah, ten bin. Yeah, Sinbin. straight to the bin. Yeah, Fair yeah, to come. Wow, yeah, absolutely. Oh, the whale uh, having a few troubles here as well. Great yeah, pre great presenter though. Oh, jeez. Tip Merlin last week to everyone that would listen. Yeah, and still closed what uh, north of four dollars on the tote as well. So. Still doing it is the whale. Okay, big weekend in uh, Western Australia, obviously with the uh, Quokka being run, the slot race over there, and Trackside's representative uh, is Whitehack in the field. And he's been a bit of a shortness, Steve, in this market. I think there was, he was at a bigger price than $21, but this is a nice field, as you'd expect. Yeah, travelling at $21 now, Whitehack, the local. Uh, as you say, I think he was dangling at 31, possibly 41 earlier in the week. But Amelia's Jill heads the market, the local hero at 3.8. She's drawn a wide gate there, but naturally she goes back. But 
foot that wide gate, you'd suggest the back third for the favourite. Overpass at $4.50, one or two of the Baker train gallopers that will show a bit of pace influence. Uh, overpass at $4.50, the defending champ, Bella Nipatina, coming from the east at $6. Oscar's Fortune, who did beat Amelia's Jewel last start at $6 in that third line. King of Sparta at $7.50. Uh, Malkovich, again, a pace influencer at $21. And then you've got Wytak there at $21 as well. And yeah. Press during the week, I think he had a track gallop during the week, and most pundits suggesting uh, he looks pretty strong. We know at his best, uh, he's a bit of an enigma in a lot of ways. He's brilliant at his best, Paul. He certainly is, and I'm so happy that we were able to um, sneak a promo past oh. you boys. Um, and it's a big, it's a good one. Yeah, it is a very good one. Too good. Too have a look. Good. At, have a look at that. Back Whitek in the Quokka, right? Fixed odds win bet. Um, and if he finishes second, third, fourth, fifth, I haven't finished, sixth, yeah, exactly. seventh, you'll get your money back up to $50 as a bonus bet. So he only has to, what, finish in the top half of the field for yeah. you to get some money, uh, get a bit of a return. So I thought it was sixth. You've even slipped another placing in there. Seventh. Why would you not get stuck into that promo? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why yeah. would you not? Do you give him a chance, Steve? You get... At his best, right? Yeah, I suppose the dilemma is he's going to probably have to pass the majority of the field at roughly around the 600 metre mark. He's going to be, get back in the last two or three. So he's going to be in that similar profile to Amelia's Jill, Bella Nipatina. Uh, yeah, it's going to be a race in two. You're going to have the Baker pair up front. Yeah. And depending on race tempo, what chance those back markers have. I know the rail's out three metres, I think. In terms of profile, that's the ideal position for the rail at Ascot. And the weather looks A-OK -okay as well. But mm. uh, it'll be just to keep an eye on the track and how it's playing and, and all that. Um, but, uh, look, he's definitely got the ability. There's no doubt about that. You don't win a railway like he did at Pukekohe and, 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 and take a, a blind side to it. So, look, he's got the ability, but he'll need luck in running. OK, good luck, Theo Sullivan, Scott team. Good luck to Trackside in this year's running of the Quokka Go White Tech. 100%, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Nice to see them pull what that off. What a promo. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, okay. you guys hate it. I love it. Yeah, <laughs> no surprise there. That's been the story of our lives. Uh, right, no maid, uh, no BP as we mentioned, but mm -hmm. we've still got a maidener of the week, Steve, uh, and it's more of a maiden of the week than a maidener of the week. Uh, run us through this. Yeah, there were some impressive maiden winners, uh, including Escard Lotaki last Saturday and Super Photon, who won the first at Rot uh, Rotorua. But I'll go to Ottawa Park. Great to see this track back in action after three or four months. Uh, under repair, you'd say, but this was a, a really good win from Pure Fiction, who led, Jess Allen was doing the riding here, led, controlled the race, and in fact, it was very slow, you see there to the 600, almost 10 laps below open class, and they've come home in 35.29, which was the second fastest on the card, only exceeded by the juvenile race, a game won by Super Photon, over 1,150 metres, so look, the overall speed rating was a healthy 3.1 lengths above maiden class, but I just wanted to identify the Beaton Brigade, the second horse, Sweet Pea, who was well found in the market, uh, finished strongly, best last 200 of the race. Uh, the third ho horse, Monsoon Knight, out of the James Wellwood team, was doing all its best work late. And also Bourbon Impress, who was a bit of an eye-catcher on debut at Mudder Mudder. Watch this horse at roughly around the 400 metre mark, just just at a real flat spot when they really asked to sprint, and like I say, a crawl and sprint home. Um, but he, again, was doing all his best work at the late uh, the late and concluding stages. So Sweet Pea, Monsoon Knight, and Bourbon Impress, I think they're worth following in a, in a faster run race and a maiden race in the near future in the next two to three weeks. OK, that's nice. We've got a few sub-winners coming out of that maidener of the week. Right, we've got two very, very good domestic meetings, Ellerslie and Rickard. Let's start at Ellerslie before we get to the Easter Handicap. Let's have a look at weather and track conditions, Steve. Uh, what are we going to be playing on? Well, currently it's a soft five. Now, the dilemma, this will really test Ellerslie. Um, look, again, the rail's back in the true. We'll just rewind the clock. Ten days ago, they had the abandonment on the Wednesday. The rail was out ten metres. They've gone back in the true for a feature meeting. They've done the repairs, what is necessary for this card to go ahead. The dilemma is there's a lot of rain forecasted tonight, thunderstorms, etc., around the Auckland area, and rain on race day. So hard to know where this track will lie, but currently a soft five for Ellerslie for Easter Handicap Day. OK, here is the Manco Easter Handicap Group, three over the 1,600 metres. Steve, race seven on the card. And 
no surprise in a handicap that you get a market that looks a little bit like this. Yeah, Provence heads the market at five dollars. Uh, Snazzy Tavi at five fifty. I think they're five fifty each of two at the top of the week. So a little shift inwards around number ten. Chattahoochee at seven dollars again off a peak of eight dollars. Uh, Rudyard has been well played eight fifty into seven. Saint Bathan's gone the other way seven out to seven point five with the stable mate in Devastate. Uh, White Noise is defending champ at ten dollars. Tavatak has to carry the big pudding at twelve dollars. Cognito, should I say, at $14. Long John Zong Feng, $18. AOT Lad at $31 with Channel Surface. So, a couple of firmers there, including Provence, uh, Chattahoochee, mm. Rudyard, and Devastate. Okay, competitive betting market, Paul, as you would imagine. The first race I want to have a look at is the Flying Handicap, uh, where uh, Provence finished second. A Tavitak was there, finished fifth. And White Norris resumed, the defending champ, finishing 10th. Yeah, it was a lovely run by uh, Provence as well. Look, she got well back, started to make her move as they entered the uh, straight there at Trentham. Uh, a nice sustained run down the outside. Wasn't quite able to pick up uh, Bradman, um, probably because Bradman was just a slightly better placed in the run, mm. um, but showed a lot of guts to just keep coming down the straight and finish into second place there. Um, I thought Tavitak, who settled, um, what, two back on the rails and pulled out at the turn, um, gave another... Uh, nice little run in the straight there. A white noise, as you say, um, fresh up mm. uh, and probably needed that run. Yeah. Um, would have liked to have seen him sort of maybe finish off slightly better than he did. Uh, but as you say, the defending champion. Mm. Um, and he'll take a, a lot of natural improvement out of that run at Trentham. Um, he's just he's on the drift, which is uh, just a little concerning at the moment. Won't mind the ra any rain forecast. Exactly, yeah. yeah. How that impacts LZ, I don't know. But no. look, I don't think uh, the fast run race and the flying handicap at Trenton, which we saw, suited White Noise because he was the first up horse on the scene. As you say, he'll benefit from that run, and this looks to be a set play second up as he was in that similar mode last preparation when he won this race. But completely different setup in terms of weights and track conditions. It was a bottomless track at Pukekohe 12 months ago for the Easter handicap. He carried 54 and a half. He's now carrying 12 months on 57 and a half. So. I'm not surprised around the drift for the defending champ. OK, let's have a look at a pretty progressive horse in the making here in Chattahoochee coming out of a rating 75. Steve um, just keeps winning this horse, keeps putting in, uh, keeps stepping up, and this was another strong win. Yeah, controlled the tempo, second out of the jock here. But the, the horse veered out in the concluding stages, you'll see here, and it might have been intimidated by Hattrick, who laid out towards the end as well. But look, the last two runs have been around that 95, 96 performance rating, which if he replicated on Saturday, is very, very close to be winning this race. So, look, he maps in a similar profile. I think Matt Cameron, who jumps aboard, will have options from barrier one. He can take the trail, or if there's not enough speed out wide coming across, he can lead. So, look, Matty will have options from barrier one and down in the weights. Yeah, I've got him definitely in the top two or three and definitely in the conversation. OK, currently paying $7 uh, as Chattahoochee uh, for the uh, Debbie Sweeney. Uh, and as a horse that is very progressive, Paul, the next race I want to have a look at, here's Snazzy Tavi uh, for the Richardson team. Where's the uh, Cambridge stud colours who we've been seeing a little bit of recently? No surprise, of course, but Snazzy Tavi's a consistent type that deserves its place here. Yeah, it certainly does. She do, um, Look, she didn't really get a, um, a strong enough early tempo, I think, in this, uh, what was it, the South Waikato Cup. Um, but she showed enough in that last furlong, I think, to suggest that she's ready for this. Um, her run over 1,500 metres boxing day was very, very good. Um, and yep, she's right there in the market as well at $5.50. So uh, Warren Kennedy aboard, there's a, a number of positives there for Snazzy Tavi. Back in trip, Steve, from 2000 to 1600, any concern around Snazzy Tavi? I think that's important. Her PB happens to be over 1600 metres over the hill here when running third and behind Town Cry. And you had apostrophe in the race, sue me, the form's been franked in the breeders at Y Rapper. Um, yeah, look, like I say, she's just regressed slightly when she's improved in trip or stepped up in trip. Her last two runs over 2,000 metres, she's just dropped in, in terms of a performance rating. So I think back to the 1,600 metres suits. The negatives, first time at HQ, uh, mm. just a, a little bit sticky for horses with the new track, etc. And barrier 10, I just got no option that the horse will go back to the last third. And I don't see a truckload of speed in this race, Thaddeus, no. which is a bit of a concern for those horses sitting in the second half of the field. So, look, she's trading at 5.50. I reckon there's there's an opportunity, if you like it, just to hold back and you'll get higher on the race day. OK. In the last video, I want to have a look at team is the horse that they've really got stuck into, and that's Rudyard. 
Talk about a consistent tight uh, is Rudyard, deserved that this win. Um, and devastating St Bathans, uh, the Forsman pair, Paul, um, were good runs as well, I thought. Uh, very much so. Uh, Rudyard uh, unfortunately gets a, a wide gate um, on Sadie, um, but that was a lovely, lovely run uh, here for the win. Uh, in behind St Bathans, of course, um, back from Australia and has had a number of runs now, so. Um, we should be seeing, uh, I think, um, a bit of improvement out of St. Bathans. So I don't mind St. Bathans at the, well, apparently 750, I think. Yeah. Um, but there's, um, gee, I see there's a bit of money for Devastate. Um, that was the run of the race, Devastate. Considering he was first up, he was three wide for the, major <clears throat> for the majority and facing the breeze. So he had to cover the most amount of ground in that race. And he, like I say, he was first up, 128 days had been off the scene. He is the big improver. If that hasn't taxed him too much, uh, he's had a couple of weeks to recover. He's right in this race. He'll love any bit of fire out of the track. He can put himself in the race. He's a high percentage play in terms of the map. I think out of the, the Forsman train gallopers, I'm leaning towards Devastate purely because there's a bit of sense of timing and that was the run of the race considering where he was in transit and the extra ground he covered facing the breeze. Well, St. Bathans wouldn't mind a bit of rain as well, though. Loves a, loves a wet track. Yeah, 100%. There's a few here that just like yeah. that, but are given the track. Um, St. Bathans, interesting runner. I just thought that he'd, he, he's just been a little bit plain his last two runs. He was along the probably the IG, the inferior ground last start and behind uh, Devastate and Rudyard. Uh, just went for that luck. Uh, he was 3-4 back the rail and tried to cover ground, uh, cutting the corner and like I say, was in inferior ground. So maybe a touch forgiving there, but mm. yeah, I'm leaning towards Devastate out of the stable pair. OK, and just a quick word on Tav Attack. Uh, obviously, meets uh, the favourite Provence, a little bit worse off the weights from last time. Yeah. yeah, the concern is when you're looking at these open handicap races, top weight horses not often win. Um, and I'm just not sure he's got that the superior class ability to carry 59 and meet a lot of these horses that are carrying 55 and below. He was a little bit plain at Trentham. I thought he was in a prime position. He was 3-4 back with a little bit of cover in the flying stakes at Trentham over 1,400 metres. And the race was run to suit. So just not sure where he sits. Again, another one that sticks in a map that could be problematic. He's drawn mm -hmm. barrier 11. Doesn't have a huge amount of tactical speed. So again, they'll probably look to sit in that neutral position with a little bit of cover, but he could be caught wide and facing the breeze. So there's a few negatives around Tavitak. I, I think he starts mid-teens at least if you want to if you want to take a little bit of the Sharrock money. OK, who have you got on top, Stephen? What's your play in the race in the Easter Handicap this year? Yeah, I'll go Devastate. I just thought mm. there was a bit of sense of timing. A, a little bit of showers around will help him. I just love that run first up. Look, I'm not confident. I think it's a pretty open Easter Handicap, which is what you like in an open handicap. Mm. Uh, but I, I'm warming to towards Tavista, uh, Devastate, Devastate purely because he's drawn well. He'll be able to show a bit of intent. Uh, there's not a huge amount of speed. So, look, he'll, he'll probably get a little bit of cover in that first three or four. And he's the big improver after a, a taxing run first up. Paul, final thoughts. How are you having a bet into this year's Manco Easter? I'll go the stable mate, White Noise. Uh, the defending oh, oh, champ. Trust the Trust the process. Yep, yep, oh, I think so. Um, I, I expect to see an improved performance uh, on Sadie. Uh, and I think he's going to... And it's get, and getting out to a nice price yeah, now yeah. as well. Yeah. OK, Steve with Devastate, Paul with White Noise. It's no doubt Andrew Forsman holds a big key to this year's Manco Easter Handicap. Lance O'Sullivan Award time, no BP. The honour's fallen to you to bestow a jockey with the Lance O'Sullivan Award, Paul. And I think this might be, I haven't seen this race replayed, I, I think, uh, yet. Um, be good to see it again. Yeah, I've, look, I've gone on, <laughs> off on a tangent. I don't know if we can give it to an Australian jockey, uh, and an Australian jockey riding in Australia as well, but uh, I thought Declan Bates um, just was absolutely... <laughs> but they declared before the race, didn't they? We're going forward, we're going to... It's going to be a truly run Queen Elizabeth, um, and they just they just let him get away. What happened to the what it's, happened to the chasing pack here? Well, you, if you're one of the jockeys in that chasing pack, what do you do? You go, well, you go. Oh, no, you go. <laughs> yeah, nah, yeah, come on. He sort of outfoxed them. He sort of he's, beat them with his own tactics, didn't he? That, and by the time they decided to make a move, the race was done. No one wanted to make a move against him. Yeah. Fantastic ride by Declan Bates. <laughs> uh, you, you've got to have a. You've got, you've got to have a few, uh, I guess, a, a bit of intestinal fortitude to be yeah, able to go forward like that. Um, because yeah. if, if you were caught, 
problem is, yeah, you look like an absolute goose if you get rounded up at the 150 and exactly. finished last. Exactly, so. finished last. But no, yeah. he uh, ran the perfect race, mm. um, and I guess the rest of the field, um, I'm sure Steve will have a little bit of a comment about that. You would have seen that broken down on Twitter, Steve, that race. Just tell us about what happened there and some oh. of the race shape and all that sort of carry well, I'm, on. I'm just, uh, I'm wary about the concept and how these weight for age 2000 metre races will be run in the future. You've got Princess Je uh, Pride of Jenny. Pride of Jenny, should I say, uh, is going to be heading towards the spring um, in a lot of our feature 2000 metre races across the Tasman. And she's not going to change her plan. She's going to go yeah. out, run well above even tempo to the 600, run them into the ground. So what does the rest of the field do? What learnings can they take out of that race on Saturday heading towards the spring? And the races like the yeah. Underwood, the Cox Plate, etc. and... The McKinnon, I mean, yeah, it's it's going to be intriguing what they do because if they keep doing what was shown on Saturday, they'll keep running bridesmaids second, third, yeah. fourth, etc. So um, maybe you've had a little chink in the in the armour here in weight yeah, parade racing, possibly because uh, over the years, I wouldn't say they've been a crawl and sprint, but they have kind of stacked them up to the. 600 metre mark and sprint at home and it's been very hard for back markers excluding winks etc but yeah look it's 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 going to be intriguing yeah. come the spring yeah. oh gee the cocks played if they let pride of jenny get away <laughs> be like sun the valley it just you know, she don't even need half that sort of uh, lead to um, by the time they get to the turn it's not a score not a hundred metre lead like she had there no. oh my goodness yeah. <laughs> that's <laughs> ridiculous yeah well done to declan yes. well done to pride of jenny okay Race number six on the card at Ellerslie's the Trelawney Stud Championship Stakes, Steve, and for the three-year-olds, fillies and boys. Moonlight Magic open favourite Thaddeus at four dollars, but we've got four fifty each of two around Investigate and Moonlight Magic. They both come out of Trentham and the Manawatu two Classic. At this stage, at this stage, Investigate holds four times more money than Moonlight Magic, a reason for the shift inwards around number two. Solidify at 750, shares that third line with Kialoha. Uh, Rabichi at $8, uh, just one at $9. Uh, double figures around North Easterly at $12. The Patron Saint has been a firmer in that middle market, 16 to 13, and first innings best to the rest, 12 in two. Or out to 14, should I say? Yeah, okay. Great race re race replay to have a look at. Paul will be the first to be the Manawatu Classic because it features both of our favourites uh, here contesting the race. Yeah, and they're equal favourites, and uh, rightly so, because these two basically ran side by side for the uh, whole race, um, bar the last 250 metres. I thought Investigate was super, uh, and but for that uh, gap closing. Um, which is coming up in the next 50 metres or so, uh, and the squeeze that he got, he probably would have finished a lot closer uh, to the winner. Um, and I thought very, very good through the line as well. So, yeah, I, I'm really, really keen on investigating. Um, has got the services of Billy Pin aboard, who had... Yeah. Um, He's riding he's very, going, very well he's at going the moment. Guns. Yeah. Um, and and Moon, uh, Moonlight Magic uh, wasn't that far away either, I think, back in uh, fourth place. So I can understand why these two are dominating uh, the market um, for this race on Saturday. Yeah, OK, let's have a look at the next race replay. That's Kia Loa, Steve, uh, solidifying Rabiki, Rabichi, I should say, at Pukakoi in a smallish field. What did you take from this? Yeah, very much a crawl and sprint race shape, Thaddeus, favouring on speed runners. See many were flat footed roughly around the 400 metre mark where the footage starts. Lot Kia Loha was very good, got back in awkward position, three back rail, peeled off heels at roughly around the 300 metre mark. Now look on pedigree and racing style, 2100 should be ideal for Kia Loha being out of the autumn sun, so out of a very good mare, Thorn Park mare, Norzita. Yeah, Probably her. one of the better bred mares going around in the country on Saturday is Kia Loha. So, look, I think the 2-1 is definitely a positive. Uh, maps to get a similar profile to what it what it did last start. So, yeah, look, I, I think she's worthy of uh, putting Mention. her putting her in, uh, into calculation. Uh, solidify... Is, yeah, I want to talk about solidify. Yeah, please continue. Yeah. I, I'm not sure. Again, I'm just not sure how to weigh up this Ellerslie track. You've got to believe that it's probably not going to get any worse at a 5 and a 6, regardless of the rainfall in the next 24 hours. But that's still slightly guessing. Um, look, his best performance ratings, or his best performance rating thus far this season, was second in the Hawke's Bay Guineas. You have to go back a fair trip, but that was on a genuine heavy track. His top three performance ratings have been on a heavy nine, a heavy eight, and a soft seven. So he definitely regresses when he gets into that better side of soft and obviously that good profile in terms mm. of track conditions. 
I'm not convinced over 2,100 metres for solidify. The pedigree suggests yes, but I'm, I'm not sure. I just feel he's, he's better kept fresh over 12, 14, 1,600 metres. So again, that's a slight concern. And on that score, I've marked him well and truly into double figures. So he's, seven, mm. he's single figures. What is he, 750, 750. currently? Oh, I personally had him a, a, a lot longer uh, and willing to take a set against him just purely on what I've spoken about in the last minute or so. OK, I want to see uh, one race replay I do want to see is Ramur breaking maidens at Tauranga last time. Uh, in the market here, we're at $18. There's been money for it though, Steve. This, tell us about this one. If you're not flash on the clock there, you see in the red, obviously to the 600 last 600 based against open class, but the class rating was negative 2.4. It got a sweet trip in transit was 3-4 back rail and just opened up beautifully. It was a day that did play a fraction on speed. The second horse has been a subsequent winner, Asgard at Otaki last Saturday, so that's positive. Mm. Uh, but just on numbers, this horse does need to improve three or four lengths, so that is a slight concern. But look, oh, there's no doubt this horse will get a trip. Um, puts himself in the race, I think. Uh, look, worthy of mm. a, a little bit of upside, but just on, on that number alone needs to improve significantly, so I haven't got in the top three. OK, I see your nor'easterlies in the race. Yeah, don't. don't. <laughs> Leave me alone. <laughs> what? You got it in your numbers, nor'easter? No, I don't. OK. Steve, have you got uh, in this year's uh, Trelawney Stud Championship stakes on top? Tricky race. Uh, I'm going for a bit of a map horse, the patron saint. Uh, led and last start at Ruakaka, um, stacked them up and controlled the race and was too good, beautifully bred. You go back to the dam side, you've got Bonneval, etc. So it's got a bit of upside. Again, similar to a couple of these horses that have been last start maiden winners and going in the deep end. But, but investigate Moonlight Magic. They both come out of the A-grade form. Oaks and obviously the Manawa 2 Classic. But the patron saint just purely on the map, Thaddeus. Mm -hmm. I think he can stack them up here. Again, being on speed at Ellerslie, regardless of what rain falls, I think will be a positive, and the patron saint will get the 2-1. So pretty keen for Joe Doyle and Andrew Forsman combo here. Speaking out of uh, good mares, imposingly, is it, does it make him the half to anything? Or any, yeah, so it comes out of the Bonneval family, etc., right, which uh, the owners have had great success out of, and yeah. also the stable. So, mm. yeah, the pedigree no-knock there, 2-1 yeah. tick. <laughs> Just purely on a map, you can go 1-3 by three play currently at 13. OK, bit of value from Steve. What are your final thoughts here, Paul? How are you attacking the race? Well, Often you get value from Steve. No, he, 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 he's yeah. always top of the book, isn't he? Probably oh, want to take it. notice, I'd say. <laughs> um, I'm not going to. Um, I, I love the look of the um, Son of Dundee investigate. Uh, I thought that run last start was huge. Um, ha has a handy gate, Billy Pinner board. There's a lot of um, positives there. So, yeah, investigate for me. Equal favour at the moment. Okay, Paul with the favourite, investigate Steve with a bit of a roughie in the patron seat. Well, I know I had it coming. I know I can't be free. Doing hard time for another week, Paul. Who was doing hard time over the last seven days? Well, I thought we'd have a look at the NRL uh, and a big, <laughs> big uh, game last weekend. The Wars hosting uh, the Manly Sea Eagles. Uh, and there was a power player, an option there mm -hmm. um, for a, um, a field goal by either team. Well, we went to Golden Point. So you're, you're rubbing your hands together yeah, then got because be you've one. got two of the best proponents of a field goal uh, in the match in Sean Johnson and Daly Cherry Evans. And unfortunately, we didn't get uh, to see a successful field goal in that match. I, I was rubbing my hand. I was running to the bank. $6, Six for a successful dollars. field goal in the uh, Waz Seagulls uh, game last weekend. Goes to Golden Point. And unfortunately, we don't get a field goal. So, yeah, hard done. Hard done by there for mine. Very hard done by a draw. Yeah, it's a t it's a tough one, isn't it? No just one's happy with it, are they? You're just not used to it in the NRL, are no, you? No, you're not. You're not. How many would happen during a season? One or two? Um, yeah, most. A draw after extra time. Yeah, after. Often, yeah, yeah. Mm, okay. Yeah, you've been doing very hard time. You would been counting the money if you'd had any field goal in the match. I was. It's <laughs> six dollars. <laughs> Let's head down to Rickett and Steve. <laughs> What's the weather and track conditions doing down there in the South Island? Contrasting to Auckland, fine weather today and race day 30th, which is great to see. The rail's in the true position. It remains in the true from seven days ago, which is fantastic. And they're currently a soft five, so I don't think it'll be any worse than the present rating. Like I say, fine weather between now and the close of Saturday. OK, race number nine on the cards, the Coca-Cola Canterbury Gold Cup. Steve, group three over the 2,000 metres. Run us through this market. 
headed by Heza Doozy and Matt Scott. Like Mick Scott opened original fave on Wednesday when Benny commenced that at mm. 420. Just shifted outwards. He's a doozy. In fact, it's just gone into $4.20. I think mean, that's just happened in the last five to ten minutes. So graphically 450 each of two. But I can tell you he's a doozy. 420 versus Matt Scott at 4.5. Perfect scenario at $5 in that third line. Time's ticking at $7. Uh, Kippadel and Pero double figures at $10 with Harlot, Dazzling Miss at $13, Al Jamala at $13, uh, outside that Lady Talina, 26 out to 31, was a little bit disappointing on the eye seven days ago. So look, overall summary, he's a doozy best back runner. Reason for the firm, he holds roughly around about 40% of the current hold, does the CD Raider. Okay, he's a doozy. Well, before we get to he's a doozy, Paul, let's have a look at the TAB uh, Southern Alps Challenge, uh, the inaugural running, and... Uh, obviously taken out by Matt Scott. Yeah, uh, one of these $350,000 special conditions races. Um, South Island trainers, great uh, concept. Uh, uh, huge, yeah, 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 and they've supported it very, very well. As you say, um, Matt Scott, um, oh, well, Mystic Park ensured this was a truly run mile because uh, absolutely took off, tried to do a pride of Jenny, uh, didn't quite happen. Uh, Matt Scott was taken back and then cut the corner, lovely, lovely ride by uh, Joe Doyle. Um, didn't really spend an extra penny in the straight and um, uh, outlasted them. So um, a nice, nice win there by Matt Scott and wonderful ride. Dazzling Miss, I thought, was, was a good. huge, huge she run. Was good. Um, and I think the extra 400 metres uh, that she gets here will be ideal. So, yeah, I, I really do like that run of Dazzling Miss. Yeah, no, it was impressive. Good to see Matt Scott take out the race. Would deserve something like that. The next race replay, Steve, is he's a doozy. Uh, finishing second at Trentham uh, over the 2100 metres in an hour Puni Gold Cup. Oh, I thought this was a very good, uh, very good run, considering it, like you say, it was handicap conditions. He carried 58 this day. He gave three kgs to the winner in Nereus, who is over in Australia and contesting is at the Mornington Cup. Mornington Cup. Um, When's that Saturday? Saturday, yeah, yeah, correct. What price are we getting on the race in the Mornington Cup? Uh, you know closet. exactly what price is dangling <laughs> out there. You're very so, keen on it. No, uh, <laughs> but no, I thought he's a doozy considering he was carrying the big weight, giving the eventual winner three kilograms, who looks to be a really promising up-and-coming stayer here uh, in Nereus. I just mm. feel there's a real sense of time. It looks to be a set play from Lisa Ladder. Last three runs, he's a doozy. Fifth at Hastings, a performance rating at 89.6. Two starts ago when he won at Trentham, recorded a performance rating at 91.3. And then last start, we just saw the vision there when running second, a 93.2. So he's, he's improving his last three starts. I just feel it's a set play. They've identified this mm. stable as a perfect race, weight for age, over 2,000 metres. He is the genuine Group 1 horse in this race. If you look at the last 18 months, he's a Group 1 winner, winning a Thorndon Mile. He's been proven at weight for age, well and truly in, in terms of uh, up in the north as well. So, um, look, I've got no doubt he'll start fave. It was probably just a little bit of an error from our side that he went up second fave. And I reckon he starts no longer than $4. He's a doozy on Saturday. OK, if you look at the uh, distance stats, it says three zero zero. Is no concern there? No, no, the no, he, no, no, he finished fourth, I believe, in Herbie Dyke uh, yep. last season. So, um, no, I've got no yeah. dramas over 2,000 metres when it comes to he's a doozy against this, uh, this calibre of horses. OK, we'll stay with you, Steve, because I want to have a look at Harlock. Perfect scenario and Lady Talina, the open handicap at uh, Ashburton. And, oh, good old Harlock. Good old Harlock. Here he comes, running second. Yeah, he's been a bit of a yo-yo in terms of where he sits in the map. A few starts ago, he led off a really strong tempo at Hawke's Bay and just got run down late. Here, you see footage, he was in the back third, came to the outside and was the old Harlot coming down the outside and finishing strongly. This will be a step up, there's no doubt about it. I'm not sure he's where he is at the moment. Uh, he's suitable to wait for age conditions. Um, Perfect scenario. I've got no doubt this horse is, is going as good as ever. I mentioned on the show three or four weeks ago when he finished in behind Mystic Park and he had to give Mystic Park four or five kilograms and he finished mm. second to that horse. I, 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 yeah, I, Like I say, he's going as good as ever per, a perfect scenario considering he's a rising seven-year-old. The only drama, as I said it three or four weeks ago, there's no real race for him. Yep. A, a 2,000 metres, a mile and a quarter, I, I've got a big set against perfect scenario, but the weight for age condition suits, so... Yeah, it's a bit of a 50-50 where you lie because he is well off in terms of the conditions of the weights, but the distance is a big variable for me around perfect scenario. I think he's better suited to 14, 1600. You've got perfect scenario in your numbers, Paul? Uh, I don't. No? Okay. No. Well, who have you uh, got? Do you, 
are you concerned about that? No, not at all. No, I think Steve points it out. I mean, he's a grand campaigner down there. Um, but it's a competitive market, so I mean, I'm not surprised. Who, who, who have you settled with? Look, I am going with Dazzling Miss. Um, it's a good run, wasn't it? it was a a value did you hit? barrier one last Saturday? And you see where it came oh, down the middle no. part of the track. Yeah. It was a gun ride, but... Well, then Matt Scott took the rail and won. I thought it out wide was all the action, and then Matt oh, the Scott the track just played to... really, really well, evenly, mm, uh, mm. last Saturday. So you could win from everywhere, just to te down to tempo related, but... Mm. Um, well, I'm, dazzling. Not, I'm not sure Matt Scott will have that opportunity to have the same run this time in. I think they'll be a bit closer, a bit congested in terms of the map. I don't think he'll get that dream run, and he's drawn a, an awkward gate. Where's he drawn? He's drawn barrier nine. So, um, look, he can be a low percentage play, Matt Scott. He relies on tempo, a bit of luck, which he got last Saturday, and rewards to the connections, etc. But, uh, again, this is a step up for Matt Scott. I, I, yeah, I reckon that price continues to drift. I think you'll get north of five dollars purely with the, st the step up to wait for age company. Okay, you were dazzling miss, Paul. Uh, dazzling miss, yeah. Candy Gate, um, and look, a run similar to that that we saw last time. I think we'll have a right in it. Um, times ticking, LB McGregor. Yeah, we haven't even mentioned the great, great old times ticking. No, I mean, what a horse to own that would have been. Exactly. Yeah. And what was it? Uh, three, three, four starts back um, when they won, beating the likes of Segunto and Waisaki. Um, you, you, I think you have to have time sticking in there somewhere, and um, uh, he's a doozy, obviously, the class yeah. um, runner in the field. So, oh, crikey, I've gone. What and, are you, boxing three here? Yeah, oh, well, I'm going to have them in there somewhere. Yeah, okay. Steve, final thought. Sounds like you're with the. Yeah, the I'm very keen favorite. on he's a doozy. He's yeah. the class horse of the field. Yeah, time sticking won this race last year, and you've got to respect him and what he's done to North as well. But he's a doozy. Wait for age. He is the genuine Group 1 horse in the field. It looks a set play from Lisa Ladder. Sense of timing. He's ready to peak fourth up this prep. OK. Steve with the favourite. He's a doozy. Paulie with a bit of value this time. And Dazzling Miss. <laughs> Over's God's time for another week. Mark these runners down. The money doesn't come for no reason. Or Rickerton and Otaki last week. I'll start up at Rickerton. Or up at Rickerton. Down at Rickerton, should I say. Uh, Mogul Terry Ray uh, just couldn't quite crack at seven into 360. Spartan was a massive move uh, in the sprint. Goes around again on Saturday, so keep your eyes peeled around Spartan backing up seven days with seven into three dollars managed third. Lucien was a big run, uh, 17 into 750 third again. So they were all around it down at Rickett and just couldn't quite nail it. The Grey Goose. This happens every week around the Grey Goose. Uh, there's a real pattern revolving around the Grey Laid Goose. Laid at Rickerton. <laughs> yeah, okay, laid at Rickerton. When it gets back down to Riverton or Ascot Park, we'll be climbing in, 14 into $7. And they finally nailed it in the last race of the day. The good old Andertons to get us home, 14 into seven fifty around Inflamed. Otaki, a charmer, 5 into $2.40. Ended up pretty short. Got back out of its ground, probably never given a chance for the position it was in. Five into two forty, their fifth. Perfect sister for the vile team. Eight fifty into five dollars first. They got a few home here at Otaki. Testify me. Steve was all over it for us last week in Hawks Bay Cup. Five fifty into two eighty. G string. Twenty six into ten for the Shane Brown team. Didn't fire unfortunately. And the ugly sister Curtis Pertab to get them home. So it was a good way to get out. Inflamed at Rickerton. And the ugly sister at Otaki also first there for Curtis Pertab and the team at $2.80, so that's over squads for another week. Mark them down, if they're going around, you probably want to be on. Okay, race number eight on the card, Steve, is the New Zealand Bloodstock War Step Stakes with the three-year-old fillies. They step to 2,000 metres, many for the first time. Yeah, race ace coming out of the New Zealand Oaks a few weeks ago, heads the market at 360, just out of turn from the original price of 350. Happy Bill, the impressive winner seven days ago at $5, shares that second, uh, second line with no rain ever. Quinta Bell at $10, double figures. Uh, Mazzucato at 12, shares the same quote with the stable mate sense of timing. Texas Dolly also at $12. It's Doris. You'd have to say a touch disappointing uh, last weekend mm, with considering the, the way... Could have made the overs gods, to be fair. It's Doris when I think about it. Yeah, so. 100%. No, no, it just didn't live up to the betting expectation at $14. Uh, caffeinated, 18. Got a short of 16, just back out to $21. Best of the rest is American Cheval at 31 off the original of 26. So, look, even spread of money. They're not coming out of trees to punt race ace currently, but mm. like I say, they're speaking four or five here, including the Tiaka up here in Mezzicato and sense of timing. OK, the Steve will stay with because the first race I want to have a look at is the NZB Insurance Stakes. It was a good race, and we see many of the combatants going around again here, and probably the traditional lead-up to a war step. Yeah, look, I don't want to take a, a huge amount away from the original winner here. 
an epi bill, but the race shape definitely suited her and on pace runners. They've crawled to the 600 and the run home 35-38, which was comparable to the 1200 metre events on the card. I suppose the key is, uh, are we going to see a similar race shape this time in over a mile and a quarter, possibly? And Epi Bell has drawn barrier three. I think she can sit outside lead and again control the tempo. So no knocks there for her to go back to back. Mazzucato was a real eye catcher coming down the outer in the Tiaki colours, considering the race shape, best closing splits. Just an awkward barrier draw this time in and no rain ever. Yeah, on, what do we do? Yeah, what do we do, On value, Steve? when you watched it live, you thought, yeah, very disappointing. Uh, but again, the race shape was against this filly. The track conditions was against her. I think the better track conditions, uh, at least a, a soft five, will be to her liking. And I think with that draw, she can sit to her three pairs closer, no rain ever. I just can't get that cuddle fourth placing out of my <laughs> hand. I know it rated through the roof yeah. and that form's come out and been frank. So for a three-year-old filly to do that and finish fourth against some really progressive and older mares was a, a massive tick going forward but yeah it's just hard to isolate and put that that form line to one side and you just got to look at the overall grounding of this horse and I think she's worth forgiving and we've definitely respected her knowing that she's still five dollars for Saturday's assignment. There's always been money for Quinterbell uh, they've obviously had, obviously had an opinion of this filly for some time for the uh, Kennedy Furlong team and her third there was was pretty good up the inside, wouldn't it? Yeah, again, that was on speed. She was trailing for the majority. She's drawn barrier five. Sam Wynn continues her association with the horse. So, again, she'll be in a similar profile on the map. Um, yeah, I'm not sure about the 2,000 metres uh, being by embellished. They seem to be sprinter milers, just like the sire. But, yeah, again, she's going to map well. And if there's a similar race shape, she's got to be in the conversation for the top four or five. OK, next race replay I want to have a look at is the favourite, Paul, race ace, uh, contesting the Oaks and contesting it very strongly. Yeah, she certainly was, uh, and uh, running the Lowland before this was very, very good as well. Um, she just kept coming here, never gave it. This, uh, I mean, she's been up against some very, very classy fillies here, mm. and nothing against the... Um, the insurance uh, stakes for. No, no, yeah. nothing against the fillies that she lines up against here, but... Yeah. Um, um, she's she's the class one here, and I hope we do see a wee bit of a drift if we don't get the sort of support that the bookies are expecting, because um, I think she's a, a great bet here with Lisa Allpress aboard. Um, she just kept coming in that uh, in the Oaks, um, and as I said in the Lowland, uh, I thought she was super. So it, yeah, I'm hoping we do get hopefully around the four dollar mark on race ace because. I'm very, very keen to jump on. Yeah, gap between runs. Steve, what's the reason when they're not piling into this? Because on paper, uh, it's been competing very well. I'm not 100% sure. Mm. Um, look, she's been a horse that's gone through the grades and hasn't been one that's attracted money in the past. So that, that may be a sign that we're not seeing the amount of money again for her. But she's uh, quite often run against betting expectation and mm. and run credibility. Uh, credibility. But uh, look, I'm... Um, yeah, I'm not sure where she lines up in terms of an SP. I, I do think she'll be quite firm late in the last five minutes, whether that's been dangled at 4.50 during the day mm. and it gets back to the quote she's showing currently at $3.60. But I've got no doubt she'll be quite firm in the last four to five minutes of trading, purely just coming out of the A-grade form line, the Oaks. Um, with her going forward, look, on pedigree being by Swiss Ace, you look at the dam side, I, I don't think she's a stayer going forward as an no. older horse. She got away with it against her own sex and own age. Uh, just purely on class when it came to the Oaks and running fifth. And what a, and what was a strong rated Oaks? There's no doubt about it. So over previous years, that Oaks, uh, in terms of the clock and the figures and whatnot, measured right up. So, um, look, dropping back to 2,000 should, should suit. I, mm. I think going forward into a four-year-old prep, she might be a sprinter miler. But, uh, look, 2,000 again against her own age and sex. No dramas there. And she's drawn barrier one. Lisa Allpress does the writing here. We'll just see how the track's playing. This is the second usage of the track, obviously, from mm. seven days ago. And just seeing if the inside is just cutting up. Uh, that might be just pu purely through wear and tear, yeah. Uh, yeah. the volume of horses on the inside part of the track. So barrier one, uh, we've got a lot of races to, to look over. Once we get to this race, you'll be able to assess whether it could be problematic or not. But, uh, yeah, look, she's the horse to beat. Um, it's just working out that SP. Fraser or Rip taking them down south, Paul. It's not a bad recipe, is it, generally? No, very, very good. Yeah, no. 
I just don't know why we haven't seen that um, flood of money yet. Yeah, OK. So that's so you've got Race Ace on top. Any other any other horses you're really interested in having a bet on here? Oh, I thought Mazzucato, that run seven days ago, uh, was huge. Um, and at $12, very, very happy to take it a little each way go on a Walker Burgesson runner in double figures. Yeah, but a money for it too at $12. Yeah, OK. Steve, final thoughts here on a wall step? Yeah, I think the play is Epi Beal. Uh, I want to trust the eye. Uh, I know things... Uh, suited her in terms of race shape but we could get a similar race shape on Saturday first a lot of these horses are stepping up the 2,000 metres for the very first time 90% of them on the quick back up Tina can slot this horse second outer from barrier three and really control the tempo and yeah I'm trusting the eye I thought it was quite a dominant win and even if they run it a little bit of a a quicker tempo than last Saturday. I don't think that will play against her totally. Uh, she just may have a bit of a class edge on a lot of her rivals here. She's beautifully bred. Uh, the mare got well and truly over 2,000 metres. Uh, uh, what was the name? Pippi Beal. I think Andrew Forsman and Murray Baker trained a few seasons ago. So, um, yeah, I'll go with the one uh, in terms of on the quick backup and won the, mm. what you'd say, the, the lead up slash semi final seven days ago. Okay, the boys at the top of the book here around Epi Beal and Race Ace. Paul doesn't mind a little bit of Mazzucato there, Walker Burgesson out there at double figures, $12 in this year's Wall Step Stakes. Last race, we're going to try and sneak a fifth race in here, team. And it's race number six on the card. It's the Daphne Bannon Memorial Great Easter Stakes. No BP, you know, a lot of hot air BP. So we've got a bit of extra time. Steve, run us through this market. Yeah, the hot air game, one of these uh, last start winners seven days ago on the quick back up, $4. We posted 4 dollars so there's a nice little lead around the hottie. In front of third decree at $5, she's that second, uh, second line with the Radiant 1. And Millifiore at 7.5. Our Echo, who's been doing its trade in the CD slash Trentham at 8.5. Sassy Merlot at $10. Adenaia at $15. Best of the rest is Eminon at 21 off the original quote of 16. So, look, the Radiant 1 and the Hottie, looking at that form line, which we'll touch on shortly, uh, is, the identifi uh, is, uh, is what they've identified, yep. both being firmers. OK, let's go back seven days, Stephen. You were keen on the Hottie this day over 1,200. You're probably keen as the Hottie stepped up to 14, I would have thought. Yeah, look, I thought uh, I honestly thought he was a play this day. Um, I know he was dropping back from 16 to 12, but again, he came out of the cuddle. It was a really strong run, similar sectionals to uh, the apostrophe, who we all saw Frank that form. Um, so, look, he, he, the key around this race and dropping back to 12, he drew barrier one, and he was able to just get that suck in behind that solid tempo, and he peeled off at the top of the straight and was very dominant, very dominant, the hottie. So... Look, 1,400, no issue. The seven furlongs, um, yeah, I reckon he's got a lot of those horses covered, including the Radiant One, who meets it fractionally better off in the weights, mm. the Radiant One. But, again, the hottie maps to get an identical uh, position, just stalk those two or three on the map and be very hard to beat. So, yeah, I'm very keen on the got hottie that for cuddle, the weekend. Got that cuddle form line. Oh, I've already no mentioned rain, that. No, no rain ever. <laughs> Where's no that. rain ever? We need it. <laughs> we need it. Paul, a horse going for four in a row is one of the close to joint favourites in third decree. And this is third decree winning at Ashburt. And a couple of other horses, Adenaya and Mia Fiore, are also in the race. Yeah, as you say, uh, um, win, win, win. And she's been stepping, gradually stepping up over distance over those three wins as well. Starting at uh, 1,150 metres. Uh, the win last start was over 13, and then we get to the seven furlongs for this one. Um, and she's looked very, very good the further she's uh, gone. So um, you'd have to say that she's a, a big, big chance here. And I, I think she is third degree. I thought the run of... Adonaya uh, was super as well. Um, what her win, I think it was a couple of starts back at, um, was it Wingatui, I think, uh, was very, very good. So, but yeah, but third degree, um, just putting the wins together and um, looks another very, very good bet for mine. Yeah, okay, it was a good run. Steve, Sassy Merlot uh, at Ashburton as well was the last time we saw Sassy Merlot. Uh, good to see Sassy Merlot do this. That uh, was a good, strong win. He had one for a season or two, Sassy Merlot. It's, uh, it's been a nice little gauge around uh, Pam Gerard, taking a few of these horses that were a little bit out of form, had one for a while, including Harlick, but also this individual, just to give it a confidence, maybe a step back in quality slash opposition. This was rating 75. Again, she always goes up, out fairly hard to the 600, so no surprise there. They've come home very soft, but she was able to hang on late, the class rating. No real knock in terms of 75 grade, but she de does need to lift uh, when stepping up to black type and the open class horses. So, look, she'll be the leader. Um, 
I think back to 1400, no negative. That was 1600, obviously. So just felt the pinch in the last 200. I probably think her sweet spot is seven furlongs, mm -hmm. Sassy Merlot. Mm -hmm. So she'll get along. Uh, there might be a little bit of pressure in and out, but uh, yeah, she'll give you a run for your money. She just, again, that last 200 against this quality. Uh, worries me a touch, uh, Sassy Merlot, but that is a real confidence booster for her for a horse that hasn't won for a while. OK, I see some money for Ears Back too, Paul. Black Adder team, $21 around uh, uh, Ears Back. Uh, you want to sit up and take a little bit of notice around that? Yeah, slightly disappointing last start, uh, mm. but I think had excuses. But as you say, uh, with John Black Adder, uh, a runner, um, you'd have to be, uh, <laughs> you know, getting out to a prize where yeah. you're going to have to take notice. Yeah, absolutely. Steve, final thoughts here uh, in a uh, Great Easter Stakes. Daphne Bannon Memorial, Great Easter Stakes. Yeah, and I focused my attention on seven days ago, that open sprint, the hottie and the radiant one, ran one and two. I think they can dominate this market and dominate this race on the turf on Saturday. I'll have the hottie on top. Uh, just with what I saw in the concluding stages, I think the 1,400 metres will suit as much, if not better, versus the radiant one. But I think the, the market will really dominate and come come strongly for these two and I think third decree will start clear third fave so at five dollars I can see that horse drifting the radiant one as I say six into five I can see that even shortening mm. and the hottie starting closer to three to four dollars so if you like the hottie I'd get stuck in right now around this individual who maps well and remembering seven days ago mm. had the vet check go over it before the start so yeah. a, lot of, a lot of things went against the hottie still back to won. 1200 and still got the job done so 1400 if they can get the horse in the barriers with no dramas this time in Watch out, and Courtney Barnes has a good association with this trained galloper okay. by the Patterson stable. If you're watching this show live, you'd be wanting to take a bit of the fixed Quinella then, right as we speak, Paul. No, 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 don't tell me you're going to be getting away from Robbie Patterson in the Great Easter Stakes, I doubt it. Uh, unfortunately, I am. <laughs> um, <laughs> what do I know? It, it, well, yeah. Uh, it's very, very hard to bet against Robbie Patterson yeah. with the sort of form you that he's in at Robbie the moment. Patterson. I do, I yeah, do. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and I can understand why the money's come for the hottie. Mm. Uh, but look, I'm, I'm trying to find a wee bit of value elsewhere. Yep. Um, and and uh, look, I did like that run of Adonaya last time out. Um, a fairly handy draw at seven. Jasmine Fawcett aboard, mm. around the $15 mark at the moment. So Adonaya for me for an each way go. Okay, Paul all over Adonaya. Steve with the favourite, the hottie in the Great Easter States. Four play time for another week. Your chance to win a hundred dollar bonus bet four leg multi with our four good things of the weekend. Get to the TAB Facebook page, interact with the leg up question, which is of course Paul today. What's the leg up question going to be? Well, your favourite <laughs> um, Easter handicap winner? Yeah, yeah. Perfect. Yeah, okay. Exactly. Be happy with that. We're on the foot. More than happy with that. That'll right. do nicely. So head to the TAB Facebook page, interact with the leg up question. Your favourite. Easter Handicap winner and you could be in to win a $100 four-leg multi with these four things. BP's kindly sent in his selection for the four-play. We won't talk about last week. We're on to this week. Ellerslie race one, pour the wine, top three, in form, up and running, up against Sacred Totono, fresh up into this, but pour the wine, top three at $1.35. Uh, I'm going to head to Rickerton, race five there. It's a rating 65 benchmark over 1,400 metres. I'm trying to inject a little bit of value into <laughs> our old foreplay here. Little bit. Uh, so I've gone with the uh, Ann Herbert filly, Contemplation Bay. Uh, forget the last start. I think the uh, starts before that just show that she's a capable filly here. I've gone for a top four finish at $3.30 as Steve Hunt shakes his head in disbelief. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was quite generous finding oh, a 220 shot. But uh, yeah, I'm pretty keen midway through the card at Allersley Race 5. The rating 75, 2 1 Armino. But a sense of timing steps up to the 2 1 or the staying trip for the very first time. It's had that grounding over 14, 1600 metres. The key around this horse, I think they'll go forward from barrier nine and they'll lead. There's no speed outside, has to be a winner. I think those two can control the tempo over 2,100 metres and be hard to run down. So a bit of insurance around the top four slot at, what, 220? 220 you are, and I thought that was outlandish. Let's not even talk about $3.30. I've gone, he's a doozy in the Canterbury Gold Cup. Top four at $1.55, that $100 multi could return you $1,400, $1,419.15. So get to that TRB Facebook page, play along, and the banner's up on the website as we speak if you want to play along at home with this week's four play. OK, best bet time for another week. Before we get there, though, let's have a look at how we managed to go last week. Trying to find a little bit of value with my best this weekend. Going to the first race on Sunday at Tarapa by the name of Kiwi Man. This horse drops back to a rating 65. 
Kiwi Man, Mark Baker, Tex Regrets, all shook up, and Princess Edda out wide, but it's Savacat's going to get one today. Savacat will beat Kiwi Man. I'm going to race five at Rickerton. It's over the 2,000 metres. I love the look of the uh, son of Savabile. Number two, Aristocrat. It is still Bobel, and he's going to win this. Bobel won it by two lengths from Gentle Ben. Miss Layla third. Fourth across Star Ballot. Then came Lombardi Generation Joy. Time Atty Diva from Demand Respect. Lady Sway, Aristocrat. I'll go early proceedings at Oteki, race three, the rating 65, sprint. Number nine, Mesa Verde resumes here for Cody Cole, who's elite when he presents his horse's first up. A little between them, they hit it. Go Hugo's arrived as well, there's three of them in line. I love how the team always run it through right to your one crosses the line in the best bits. It we've took been, a while. We've been waiting a while for my last uh, few, so that's what right. we get with you. That's what we get with you, though. You know, rocks and diamonds. <laughs> you know, if we can wait long enough, we'll have the diamond, won't we? Hopefully this week. I hope so. Yeah, OK, well, what is your best bet for this week? Uh, I'm going to head to Ellerslie Race 6, the uh, Trelawney Star Championship Stakes. Group 3, over 2,100 metres for the three-year-olds. And, oh, yeah, oh, I just love the look at Investigate here. That was a super run last time out. Um, Woodham pin on board. There's a lot of positives for mine. Going well, so, but... Yeah, I'm just trying to get one back on the board. Still plus 51%, though. It's, yeah. not, it's not all... Was, was high it? 50s? Yeah, <laughs> regressing to the mean, <laughs> I think the uh, term there. Steve, yeah. where'd you go? Yeah, oh, look, I'm very keen on the hottie. I was keen on it last Saturday. On the quick backup, just needs to replicate what it showed last start. It had a few things against it in terms of the start, etc., and the 1,200 metres, but steps up to seven furlongs, should map an identical position just off the speed, set up by Sassy Merlot, etc. So, yeah, I'm very keen on the hottie when it comes to the feature sprint on Saturday. OK. Very good. Uh, before we get out of here, let's talk bonus back racing. Paul, um, bonus backs are where, where and where and where? Uh, well, we've got a little special for you uh, this week because we've got five meetings. <laughs> five meetings. <laughs> the first four races from Ellerslie, Rickerton, Ranwick, Mornington and because uh, it's Quokka Day, uh, Quokka Day. Uh, West Australia, well, the first four races from Ascot are also bonus back races. Back to second, third or fourth. Uh, you get a bonus bet up to $50. Check out all the T's and C's TAB website. But there you go, five races for bonus back. Yeah. Okay, uh, sorry, five meetings. Five meetings. Yes. 20 yeah. odd races for bonus back. Here's our suggested bonus back bets. Paul, you've gone where? Wet and wild. Okay. Race, race two at Ellerslie. Yep, yep. Bit uh, of value, $12, isn't it? It is indeed. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So, well, if you're going into a bonus back race, why not take a wee bit of a. Just push the boat out slightly and. Um, Things don't quite go to plan. I like it how there's different ways, different ways you can attack these bonus back races too. What have you done, Steve? What have I done? Race four, Wind of Change. Again, drawn barrier one, just got run over late. Rating 65, 1200 metres. I think Craig Grills can just take this horse to the front and be awfully hard to catch. So you're just getting a nice run for your money down the straight around Wind of Change. Okay, and Paul went rough, I went favourite. Wise Men's Diva, the money was all over it last week. Just got out of its ground and was charging late. Nice draw for Courtney Barnes 3, so I thought $2.70 is worth a bit of a flick around. Wise Man Steve and Robbie Patterson uh, in this week's bonus back racing. We've obviously got that quokka. Uh, what Do you want to mention that again or not? Yeah, I think we should. Oh. Um, the promotion on Wytak. <laughs> uh, the O'Sullivan Scott runner going for us in the uh, quokka. Uh, just place a fixed odds win bet on Wytak in the quokka. And if he finishes second, third, fourth, fifth, Six or seventh, you'll get your money back up to fifty dollars as a bonus bet. Once again, don't forget to check out all the T's and C's on the TAB website. Okay, you're robbing yourself if you don't take advantage of that promotion. I would have thought. Steve, oh. thanks for your efforts for another week. What are your plans for the weekend? Uh, I'm trying to fend off Sharrock and race <laughs> four at uh, Mudder Mudder. Mudder. If you're watching the show live, bridal train four into three. Clearly the worst way home for the tab at Mudder Mudder this afternoon. But T Rapa next Saturday, Travis Stakes Day. Oh, good. Apostrophe will probably head the market. Uh, just thinking of the horses that will contest, but you also got the breeders' stakes as well. So a nice meeting at Tarapa for Butch and the team. Okay, thanks, Paul. Uh, have a good weekend up the Waz. Very much so. Yeah, yep. Uh, over there at the, in the Gong to take on the Dragons. That should be uh, business as usual for the no, uh, Waz. Don't start saying that. And I think race three at Randwick, a former Kelso runner, now with Chris Waller, Scarlet oh. Oak. 
Currently five dollars. Have you had a whisper? Have you had a word? I uh, just uh, have a look at that um, win at Mata Mata. It was sensational. Well, that's bonus back as well. Indeed, it is. Yeah. Chica Mahita on the same race too. So a couple of ex Kiwis. Mm. Okay. Mm. Thanks. Thanks, Paul, for your efforts. Thank you, Stephen, and thank you, for, thank you to you for joining us once again on the leg up. We'll see you in seven days' time.